All right, thank you very much. My name is Joshua Dilday. Um, thank you, first of all, for allowing me to present. Thank you additionally for staying for the last presentation. I'll try to make this short and informative. And additionally, thank you for Dr. Despain for giving a great uh, uh, review of how NISQIP works. That makes my job easier for this following presentation. So without further ado, we'll get into the uh, controversial topic of splenic flexion mobilization and its true effect on postoperative anastomotic leak rate and distal colon resections using the NISQIP database as well as the colorectal target database. How do we go forward? Uh, standard disclosure, uh, the views are my own as well as my authors and none of us have any financial disclosures and uh, these do not represent the United States government, Department of Defense or the uh, U.S. Army. Anastomotic leak is one of the most dreaded complications and potential outcomes after a distal colon resection. Uh, this can occur quite frequently in up to 20% of these cases and can increase the mortality up to uh, almost a third or 25% of these patients. The theoretical reason for these has been proposed to be an increase in anastomotic tension leading to subsequent hypoperfusion. Because of this, splenic flexion mobilization has been a theoretical strategy used to provide a potential protective effect of that anastomotic uh, anastomosis uh, to decrease the amount the amount of tension and increase its blood flow. However, its routine use in distal colon resections is very controversial and has not yet been panned out, specifically in large database. There, we go. there are some cases where splenic flexion mobilization purely because of anatomical factors may be warranted. It has been studied to show that it can increase the anastomotic uh, length by in the, uh, of the intra-abdominal colon back to 10 centimeters. However, its true effect on postoperative uh, anastomotic leak rate is questionable, and it has been shown that it has significant uh, detriments associated with this procedure. It can increase the operative time. It's been shown to be a difficult operative procedure, and it can increase the potential for other uh, injuries in the surrounding area, specifically spleen, with an average increase of blood loss up to 500 cc's per case. So the question remains, do these negative aspects of the splenic flexure mobilization preclude its use in routine mobilization for distal colon resections? We sought to evaluate this using the uh, NISQIP database, and our purpose of this study was to evaluate the true 30-day outcomes after splenic, fl splenic flexure mobilization and distal colon resections. We sought to compare the specific anastomotic leak rate, and of those who did develop a leak, we analyzed factors using a univariate and multivariable regression analysis to determine the odds face ratios for those predictive factors. We used the 2000, 2005 to 2006 ACS NISQIP, which was previously described how that selection process works. Additionally, we tracked those patients that also found in the colorectal targeted database, allowing us to identify specific colorectal factors. We identified these cases based on CPT codes specific for distal colon resection and colorectal anastomosis, and we separated them with cohorts based on a concomitant procedure linked with CPT code of splenic flexure mobilization. We analyzed the 30-day postoperative outcomes as defined by the NISQA variables, and the anastomotic leak rate was able to be specifically captured in the colorectal targeted database. Statistical analysis included both chi-squared and student's t-test. Follow-on analysis using multivariate analysis was uh, defined at the significance of P less than 0.5. A multivariable regression study was also used to determine those factors associated with the presence of anastomotic leak. We used the comorbidities, the presence of a splenic flexure mobilization, the time, and the indication for the operation, and these were set for a confidence interval of 95. Our total results found included over 30,000 included cases. 98% of these had an ASA either 2 or 3, 50% had hypertension, and 20% did have a previous history of smoking. 28% of these cases with the distal colon resection had a concomitant splenic flexure mobilization at the time of the operation. 90% of all of these identified colorectal procedures were performed by an open approach with the, min with the uh, minority being performed laparoscopically or robotically. There are some differences between the groups. Uh, you can see the difference in the ASA categories, but specifically the splenic flexure mobilization cohort did have higher rates of smoking, hypertension, and weight loss greater than 10%. Regarding the 30-day outcomes, overall outcomes were higher with the presence of a splenic flexure mobilization. This included both a 26% complication rate. Additionally, subgroup analysis showed that it was increased rates of both major and minor complications as defined by NISQIP, as well as systemic and local complications by the same definitions. It also was shown to increase operative time when the presence of a splenic flexure mobilization was used. Subgroup analysis was performed, separating the cohorts into the operative approach, either open or laparoscopic. These echoed the similar results in the larger database, showing that the open splenic flexure mobilization had a higher morbidity. It also had a slightly increased operative time from an open approach, but not with a laparoscopic approach. 
and the effect of morbidity was, or mortality was split. The open splenic flexion mobilization group had a higher mortality, where the laparoscopic had, uh, sorry, scratch that the open was, had a lower mortality, where a laparoscopic had a higher mortality. Here you can see the overall 30-day outcomes regarding the NISC, from the NISQIP defined variables. All comers had an increase in 26% complications when used with the splenic flexion mobilization. This includes all major, minor, local, and systemic complications. Additionally, you can see the increase in length of operation of up to 17% when the splenic flexion mobilization is utilized. Subgroup with the open group was similar to the larger uh, analysis with an overall complication rate similar. Uh, the length of operation was also seen to be longer in the open cohort, but the mortality was slightly less when the splenic flexion mobilization was used. Laparoscopic cohort showed a difference in mortality, but did not show a difference in the length of operation uh, when a laparoscopic primary approach was used. The specific addition of the colorectal targeted database allowed us to capture those patients into a further and more specific database using colorectal variables. We captured 11,000 of these and identified specific colorectal specific factors. These include preoperative bowel prep using mechanical or oral techniques, as well as systemic chemotherapy, radiation, and the presence of a leak. 30-day outcomes were similar, as these were the same patients already identified in the larger cohort. However, the rate of anastomotic leak was no difference when the addition of a splenic flexure was used and specifically defined by the SNSQIP data set. Here you can see similar results from the overall complications, as these are, in fact, the same patients, just with a more strict uh, identification of colorectal specific factors. You see the overall complication is higher, as well as the length of operation with splenic flexure mobilization is also higher. However, no difference was seen in anastomotic leak rate when the anastomosis uh, was theoretically protected with the presence of a splenic flexure mobilization. Additionally, no difference was seen in the management of such outcome, whether this was treated with reoperation, IR, operative management, or no operation at all. We subsequently used univariate analysis to identify the factors of those cases who did, in fact, have a splenic flexure mobilization. And we saw that there were factors with preoperative factors were seen to be associated, as well as antibiotic and mechanical bowel prep, as specifically identified in the colorectal set. Operative time was associated, although this was uh, very small, but it did reach significance. And the indication for operation or the status of an emergency operation was not seen to be associated with an increased odds of an asthmatic leak. Here you can see the associated risk factors. All of these are medical comorbidities or preoperative factors as compared to the factors not associated, which would be the operative factors, whether they're indication for the operation or the approach of the operation itself. Showed no increased odds of an asthmatic leak. Multivariate regression was also then showed to specifically identify those at the highest risk. And you can see that lack of preoperative antibiotic prep, increased weight loss, and chemotherapy show the inc most increased odds for an asthmatic leak and not the presence of splenic, flo fl splenic flexure mobilization or the uh, operation indication or the operative approach. So in summary, the ACS NISQIP colorectal specific targeted database allowed us to utilize a specific identification of an asthmatic leak, allowing this to be the largest current database identifying such complication and distal colon resections. We did show a higher rate of overall complications when the splenic flexure is concomitantly performed, and this includes both local and systemic complications. However, there was no difference on an asthmatic leak rate when this mobilization was performed, regardless of the approach or the indication for the operation. The factors that were seen to be protective, or at least increase in odds ratio for the anastomotic leak, were the preoperative factors, not the operative factors seen, and the risk of, sur of leak was marginally increased with the operative time. These results are similar as what's previously been found in the literature. Uh, there are some studies that do show a lack of protection with the splenic flux mobilization. However, these studies are on a single institution in a larger or a smaller data set. There also is consistent data that shows increased morbidity when you have been shown to utilize the splenic flexure mobilization, and these occur even in the elective colectomies for sigmoid diverticulitis. Splenic flexure mobilization has also been shown to increase the operative time. The average study is 46 to 70 minutes. Our study increased it only by about 30 minutes, a little bit lower than the average of time as previously quoted, but those are smaller studies. There's research support or research supporting the routine use of splenic flexure mobilization is lacking. The only specific instances have been shown to be theoretically beneficial in the literature. It's been known to increase the operative time. It's been known to show only theoretical advantages. The morbidity associated with splenic flexure mobilization is likely multifactorial. The time associated with the operation can likely be linked to the postoperative outcomes as defined by NISQIP. The anatomy and the technicality of the procedure are also known factors that can potentially increase the risk. 
six times more likely to have an incidental splint pr procedure, uh, which was also panned out in previous literature data sets. There are limitations to this study. So most are similar to using the NISQIP or a large retrospective data analysis. The variables of the procedures can also be identified or miscoded by using simply CPT coding. Also, the timing of the initial complication, although within a 30-day window, is limited to when it actually occurred, and long-term follow-up is not able to be obtained. The reason for the splenic flexibilization is unknown, and the routine use of the operating surgeon is unknown as well. However, in conclusion, colorectal anastomosis may, in fact, warrant and necessitate the need for splenic flexion mobilization simply for fe technical feasibility. However, its use does not preclude the risk of an increased anastomotic leak rate, and it may increase the overall morbidity. Based upon this data, routine use of splenic flexion mobilization in every distal colon resection is not currently supported on a large database study. These are our references, and I'll now take any questions. Mm -hmm.